Okay, today I'm just going to demonstrate how to determine the pH, how to estimate uh, a weak, strong acid using a stock by base by using pH meter, that is by observing pH change when acid is titrated with the base. This is the pH meter, there are two models. One is Eriko model, this is the Eriko model and this is the Systonics model. And uh, in both the models, first the instrument has to be standardized with a standard buffer. That will be done by the examiner himself. And the solution which has to be titrated will be given in the beaker. And the glass electrode, that is uh, double electrode is connected to the terminal here. All the connections will be made before the experiment and we check the instrument and then it will be ready for the uh, practical experiment. Now how to go about this uh, pH? First of all the solution to be titrated is given a known volume in the beaker uh, which should be diluted and the electrode should be dipped in the beaker containing the acid solution and if the tips are not dipping in the solution sufficient amount of distilled water can be added. Once the solution is uh, diluted with water, it should be mixed well and then in the microburate, sodium hydroxide which is usually 10 times stronger than the acid that is given is taken and it is set to zero reading. And every minute, every time you are adding 0.1 ml, the graduation of this microburate should be read before you start the experiment and here most of the microburates are 2 lines is equal to 0.1 ml sometimes it is 4 lines you have to check before you start with the microburate once you fill the microburate to 0 then add 0.1 ml to the beaker containing acid solution mix it well and then immediately note down the reading if there is any fluctuation in the instrument wait for the stabilization and then you take the reading. So go on adding sodium hydroxide from the microburate every time 0.1 ml and then at the end point when the neutralization occurs you can see there is sudden jump in the pH reading and after getting the jump you continue the titration of addition of 0.1 ml for 5 to 6 times so that you will be able to get the correct graph for your experiment. From the graph only you are going to find out what is the volume of the sodium hydroxide required for neutralization. So in the data column have already been given to you in the practical records. You can just go through the tabular column and the calibration part and you are going to plot the graph of delta pH by delta V. Delta pH by delta V versus volume of sodium hydroxide in milliliters or ml uh, and you will get a graph like this the maximum of the graph corresponds to the volume of sodium hydroxide required for neutralization once you get the volume using the relation V1 N1 is equal to V2 N2 you can calculate the normality of the uh, hydrochloric acid or strong acid that is given to you from there you use the expression weight per dm cube is equal to equal to weight into normality. Normality of HCl is 36.5. You multiply that with the normality, you will get the result. That is what is the estimation of HCl using sodium hydroxide by observing change in pH. So there is separate marks for calculation. So you need to calculate below the tabular column for delta pH by delta V. Calculation is done and then only it is posted in the tabular column and the graph should be neat and it carries maximum marks of 6 and here you need to give the scale of x axis, y axis and you have to write what is the volume that you are getting from the graph in the graph sheet itself. So this is about the pH titration of strong acid versus strong base. You can see both the instruments here and uh, not much variation anymore it will be preset before the examination it will be checked and preset so nothing to be worried you can do the experiment within half an hour and finish your experiment.
okay that is about pH dilution okay second now I am going to explain to you about the colorimetric experiment that is using photoelectric colorimeter there are three models that we are having in the laboratory one is the old model where you can see that there is a knob for pressing the uh, pressing and you need to press and take the result here and this is the kuwait holder where you are keeping the kuwait and you can see that there is filters you can change the filter by moving down the filter knob here and you have the filters and it's already numbered you can just start with the least filter that is 45 and you can go up to the highest that is available in the instrument now there are two knobs here you can see that one is for coarse adjustment another is for fine adjustment this is the display board and you can switch it on the instrument before you start the experiment for some time to stabilize then for estimation of copper by calorimetry using ammonia ligands first and foremost we need to prepare the stock solutions so first preparing the stock solutions we have 10 ml standard flask like this so you number the flask it will be numbered and given to you number the flask or in the numbered flask you run down the different volumes of copper as well as ammonia which is the ligand and then you make up to the mark with distilled water to the exact mark given in the flask and then shake well after each maker and keep it for 10 minutes so you can see that by the time you complete the last flask of different volumes you can see that 10 minutes will be completed so each time you see that the flasks are shaken well before you transfer it to the covid now after preparing the solution series of aliquot solutions here of the copper and the ammonia ligand now choose the highest concentrated liquid from the flask that would be the last flask in the series of solutions that you have prepared and the first solution would be the blank solution which is colorless now using the kuwait you choose the filter here 45 first take the kuwait rinse it well with the blank solution and see that the kuwait is well wiped with the tissue paper and there should not be any water droplets or the fingerprints on this kuwait outside and it should not be filled to the brim also three fourth or little more than half of the kuwait is sufficient to carry out the experiment there will be a mark on the kuwait which you can see here and there will be a mark on the calorimeter instrument also you see that each time you keep the kuwait in the same positions for correct readings once you keep the kuwait here in the kuwait holder in the position that i have already mentioned first start with the least filter that is 45 and then use the coarse and the fine knobs and press this knob in this old uh, uh, instrument and make it to zero using these knobs once it is set to zero remove the kuwait containing the blank then transfer the solution the, the concentrated solution of copper into another kuwait use the same procedure of wiping with the tissue paper and keep it in the kuwait holder press this knob again without touching the knobs of adjustments press this knob gently and find out the reading so once you get the reading repeat this process with different filters 45 47 51 54 up to 67 each time when you change the filter you need to keep the blank set it to zero and then you have to keep the solution concentrated solution measure the optical density that will be displayed in the digital display here so after finishing all the solutions you tabulate the results and find out at which filter or the lambda map that is wavelength you are going to get the maximum optical density 
So that should be the lambda max for this particular experiment. So find out whether in 60 filter or 67 or 57 filter, find out at which filter you are going to get the maximum optical density reading. Once you get it, now the second part of the experiment you have to start with, choose that filter and keep it constant which at which you are getting the maximum optical density. Next what you have to do is again keep the blank in the cuvette, selecting the lambda max here, then press it and adjust the knobs to set it to zero and then you have a series of solutions. So each time transfer it to the cuvette, rinse it, uh, rinse the solution, uh, rinse the cuvette with the solution that you are taking and then keep the solution in the cuvette holder, press this knob and find out the optical density. So find out the optical density for each solution that you have prepared and then you need to draw a graph of optical density versus concentration in uh, ppm. Before coming to the graph, I want to show you another model of the calorimeter. This is the uh, photosystonics model here. Here little different filters are here compared to the Helico model. You can see that here itself the display is given, the different filters display is given. So you can do the experiment without using any knob here. First keep the blank here in the Kuwait holder as you would do it with the other model. Set it to zero. For, before, for setting up the zero you have to just press this red button here. Once you press the red, red button, it will calibrate and make it to zero. Then remove the blank and use the concentrated solution. And each time note down the optical density, change the filter, make it zero with the blank and repeat the same experiment as you have done in the other model. Here there is nothing to press or adjust. Only once you calibrate with the blank to zero, uh, no need, it will directly give you the display here. So this is the systonics model that we are using. The other model, the Helico model, the latest model that we are using is compact calorimeter here. Here you can see the Kuwait holder with the mark here to keep the Kuwait in the same, uh, in alignment with this mark here. You can choose the, I mean see here the filters, different filters. It is same as, it's, as it is in the old model. And here to make it zero, you have only one knob. So in the old model, you have a course in the uh, fine knob here. You have only one knob here in the uh, latest model. You can just turn it to uh, turn, move it up and down to make it zero with the blank. Then here, no need of pressing. You get the direct display as you keep the cuvettes containing the solution. The rest of the procedures are run in the same. So you can see here the graph. The third one that you can see estimation of corpus. After tabulating the results with, from the calorimeter, you draw a graph of optical density versus concentration of copper in parts per billion, that is PPM. You should get a straight line graph passing through the origin. That is a must and the graph carries 5 marks. You, you need to be careful. The graph should pass through the origin and covering maximum number of points to get full marks in the examination. So once you get a straight line passing through the origin, it verifies Bayer Lambert's law and from the optical density that you have got for the unknown solution, unknown will be given by the examiner. So find out the optical density of the unknown solution, uh, tabulate it in the graph and find out the concentration of the, concentration of the unknown that carries 10 marks, maximum marks. So like this you can find out or estimate the copper ions using ammonia as ligand by calorimetric method. So determ determination of rate constant for the oxidation of indigo carbon using calorimetric method. This oxidation of indigo, uh, indigo carbon is a first order kinetics and the solution of indigo carbon will be deep blue in color. So using chloramine T which is called as CAD. In the buffer medium of pH 10, you can find out how CAD can oxidize indigo carbon. During the process of oxidation, you can see the
color, intense blue color fading to light green color. Uh, at the end of the experiment, you can see the solution becoming colorless. So since it is kinetics, you need to give importance to the timing. So you have to understand how to start or how to use this stop clock. You can see that when you are starting the stop clock, you just use this knob and push it up. When you want to stop it, you just bring it down. And here, this is the knob to make it to zero. So here, timing is very, very important. So because kinetics depends on time. So first, we, you have to prepare the buffer solution. So buffer solution will be prepared and uh, different solutions for buffer will be given to you. You have to prepare buffer of uh, pH 10. So for that you have to uh, take a 50 cc of borax solution, 0.2 molar solution and 43 ml of 0 0.02 molar sodium hydroxide and 7 ml of distilled water. This preparation of buffer will not be given to you in the examination. So you need to learn how to prepare the buffer solution. So 43 ml of sodium hydroxide, 50 ml of borax solution and 7 ml of water. Mix it well, transfer 98 ml of this buffer solution into another 250 ml beaker. Meanwhile, you measure using small measuring jars, just 1 ml of cat and 1 ml of indigo carbon separately. First, mix 1 ml of cat to 98 ml of buffer, mix it well and then take it in the Kuwait. After taking it in the Kuwait, select the filter 60. Here, no need of determining the lambda max here. So, you can select the filter directly to 60 in all these three instruments, whichever instruments that you are using. Keep the Kuwait containing buffer plus cat here using the same procedure taking care to see that there are no water droplets here outside the Kuwait uh, or no fingerprints. Wipe it neatly with the uh, tissue paper then insert it into the Kuwait holder like this and then make it to zero. So you are choosing the filter at 60 and you are making the instrument set to zero using the blank solution that is 98 ml of buffer plus 1 ml of cat. Now don't throw this blank solution, pour it back to the same beaker from where you have taken. Now you measure 1 ml of indigo carving, add it, mix it as early as possible, transfer it to the Kuwait and then immediately keep it in the Kuwait holder, start the stop clock and take down the reading. That corresponds to the optical density at zero reading. So I will repeat it once again. After adding indigo carbon, mix it at the earliest and transfer it to the Kuwait. Keep it in the Kuwait holder. Start the stop clock and immediately note down the reading. That corresponds to the optical density OD0 zero at zero time. Then after three minutes or two minutes as mentioned in your procedure, I think it would be better if you take it two minutes. Two minutes, once in two minutes, you note down just the reading from the coloring meter. So nearly 10 to 12 uh, readings has to be taken to get the graph. So don't touch the time at the st uh, stop clock in between. Once you start the stop clock till the experiment is over, you are not touching the clock. So you just have to make the readings once in two minutes. After getting the readings for 10 to 12 times, you can close the experiment. The next part is the drawing of the graph. So there will be a column uh, here which uh, corresponds to log OD0 by ODT. OD0 corresponds to the first reading at zero time. ODT corresponds to the optical density at different intervals of time. So there will be a column in your calculation tabular column. So you first calculate log of OD0 by ODT and you are having the column regarding time, that is time in minutes, to 1 or 0 minute, 2 minute, 4 minute like that. So draw the graph of log of OD0 by ODT versus time in minutes on the x-axis. You will get a straight line graph. So the, from the straight line graph calculate slope. I have already shown you how to calculate the slope here, even in the graph. So take any two points on the graph line, straight line graph. 
and then mark it as ABC. Slope will be given by AB by BC. So here you need to calculate K by two methods. One is the rate constant K using the expression 2 not 3 by T into log of OD0 by ODT. And the unit of K here, the first order rate constant is minute raised to minus 1. You can see that uh, at different intervals of time when you do the calculation, the K should remain constant. If you want to show that it follows first order kinetics. Here again the calculation part has to be separately written before the, uh, I mean uh, below the tabular column and then it should be posted to the tabular column because 5 marks are there for calculation and 1 mark for writing down the unit. Here calculation of K from the graph, first you calculate slope which is given by AB by BC and then multiply, by, multiply the slope by 2.303 that gives you the K value again by graphical method which has the unit of minute rise to minus 1. The calculation of K using graphical method should coincide with the calculation of K from the rate expression where you are taking the average of K at different intervals of time. So this is about the kinetics of oxidation of indigo carbon using color. This is a digital conductometer. This is used for performing conductometric titration, that is titration by measuring conductance of electrolytes. Here, the experiment is to find out or estimate hydrochloric acid and acetic acid using a strong base sodium hydroxide, whose concentration is usually 10 times stronger than the acids that are given to you by measuring conductance displayed in the conductometer. So first and foremost, you should switch it on for some time to stabilize and here the instrument will be checked before the experiment and this is what is called as the conductivity cell. We can see the two electrodes here in build and this is the connecting wire and we are going to connect this for two terminals here like this. So, the connections will be made well before the start of the experiment. So this cell should be always, the, either the electrodes or the cell, whatever we are using, we should take care to see that always these cells are kept inside distilled water. So once the connection is made and the conductivity cell is dipped in the given solution, usually the acid will be pipetted out by the examiners. So you are going to dip the conductivity cell if the electrodes are not dipping properly, you can add sufficient amount of distilled water, mix it well and then find out the conductance here displayed uh, using this uh, display board and you can record it without adding sodium hydroxide. Before adding sodium hydroxide, what is the reading? That is for zero volume of sodium hydroxide, the conductance of either the HCl solution or the acetic acid solution. Meanwhile, you fill the burette, micro burette. As I have already told you, you have to take care of the graduation of the micro burette. Find out how many lines corresponds to 0.1 ml because we have the, uh, uh, different calibrated burettes. So check it before you start. Make sure that you are going to add exactly 0.1 ml into the beaker containing the acid solution. So after adding 0.1 ml, mix it well note of the conductance here. So continuously add 0.1 ml and you can see that for strong acid like sodium hydrochloric acid there will be decrease in the conductance in the beginning. Once the neutralization occurs there will be increase in the conductance. So this is the trend that you need to observe for conductometric titration. For strong acid like HCl the conductance decreases and for after the neutralization point, the conductance increases. Once you start getting the readings in the increased uh, uh, manner, you can just take some 5 or 6 readings and stop the experiment. So for conductometric titration of strong acid, you can see uh, the V-shaped graph here, the conductance being plotted against the volume of sodium hydroxide. 
But for acidic acid, a weak acid, the conductance being very, very, the dissociation being very slow, you can see that when you start adding, after recording the conductance of acetic acid without adding, that is zero volume of sodium hydroxide, you, you can see that you go on adding 0.1 ml, initially it increases and there will be sudden increase in the value of conductance once the neutralization point is reached. So after the neutralization, that is after getting the jump here, you can see that there will be continuously you take some five or six readings by adding 0.1 ml each time and then you can stop the experiment. Then you draw the graph of Then you draw the graph of conductance versus volume of sodium hydroxide, conductance on the y-axis, volume of sodium hydroxide on the x-axis. For strong acid and strong base, you can see that there will be two straight lines. First it decreases and then it increases. So you will get two separate lines here, straight lines. You extrapolate them and make them intersect at a point. From the point of intersection, you drop the perpendicular to the x-axis. That reads the volume of NMOH corresponding to the neutralization point. Similarly, the second graph at the bottom shows for weak acid, that is acetic acid versus strong base. Again, the conductance is plotted against volume of sodium hydroxide. Here first increases, there will be sudden jump. You will get two separate lines here as in the beginning, as in the first case. You can extrapolate them to meet at the point. From the point of intersection, you drop the perpendicular to the x-axis. That gives you the volume of NaOH. So once you get the volume of NaOH, using the expression V1 and 1 is equal to V2 N2, find out the normality of either the HCl or the acetic acid and then use the expression weight for dm is equal to equivalent weight into normality. So equivalent weight of HCl is 36.5 and that of acetic acid is 60. Multiply the equivalent weights by the normality that you are calibrating. That gives you the weight, weight of either the HCl or acetic acid in one dm cube of the solution. Here again, you are drawing two graphs here, one for strong acid, one for weak acid. And this is a single experiment. Don't think that for strong acid, one experiment, weak acid is another experiment. While writing the procedure also, you should mention how you are determining the, or estimating the strong acid as well as the weak acid separately using the strong base by conductance observation or conductance measurement. So this is about the conductometric titration of strong and weak acid versus strong base.